Yo, 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 what's up, Pathway Church and everybody watching and listening to our Pathway podcast, building a bigger people in Christ by digging deeper into the content that we're hearing here at Pathway Church. And I'm joined by Pastor Brian, as always. How are you doing today, Pastor Brian? Doing great. Awesome. And then for the first time on this edition of the Pathway podcast, we have Pastor Zorro with us today. How are you doing today, Pastor Zorro? Uh, I'm pretty excited. Feels like I made it to the big leagues today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, Pastor Zorro. I'm super excited um, because this, type, this conversation, one, is just going to be great just because of the content we're sharing, but the, I think the people that we have in the room having it is going to even liven it um, even more. And I'm James, um, if we haven't met, and I get to work in the Next Gen department. And I'm so glad that you've taken the time to listen to this Pathway podcast. And we're going to jump right into our content um, this morning. So for those of you who do not attend Pathway Church or you missed this, this past Sunday's uh, message, um, it was a Mission Sunday. We uh, do this four times a year um, here at Pathway Church where we celebrate local and global missions. And specifically for this Mission Sunday, it was our um, we were highlighting the ministry called Compassion. So we call it Compassion Sunday. So before we start into the, the content of what Brian talked about in his sermon, um, why, why, why do we do Mission Sunday, Pastor Brian, Pastor Zora? Why, why do we do Mission Sunday and why specifically with Compassion International? Well, I mean, we do our Mission Sunday, you know, like you said, four times a year, every fifth Sunday. It's because we want to highlight our, our partnerships with, like, and remind our church family that we're not just about what's in these four walls, right? We also want to live outside of these four walls. First, it's our Judea, our Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And this past Sunday, we got to celebrate the ends of the earth and highlight that. Uh, compassion was something that was here before I got here, so I think Pastor Brian can speak a little more into that. Yeah, uh, Compassion International is an amazing ministry that uh, first impacted my life when I was 19 years old and was in a place where uh, I was asked if I would sponsor a child and didn't have much, but uh, embraced that journey and began to see the power of prayer and letter writing and even mm -hmm. what it did for my own heart for mm -hmm. the nations. And so we've, as a family, been doing that for years. I've traveled with uh, Compassion a couple of times uh, to different sites uh, in Kenya and Uganda. And I just love the ministry because they are so gospel-centered, mm. so local church-centered, and so child-focused. And so they do a fabulous job of using the resources. Over 80% of what comes in goes directly to those places where a local church is caring for a child, ministering to a family, and giving the gospel. And they meet basic needs. They provide you know, education. They provide uh, empowerment, even entrepreneurial training for the families. It's absolutely amazing. And so we're blessed that, yeah, about a yeah. year ago, we started this formal partnership. And uh, we had, uh, before yesterday, over 120 kids being sponsored by our church. Uh, yesterday went well, so mm -hmm. we're looking forward to seeing how many more are sponsored. And uh, right now, a lot of those sponsorships are in Uganda and uh, Haiti, and uh, just uh, amazing what God does through that. So Excellent. So shout out to Compassion International. We enjoy doing ministry with you. With that being said, what were some of the highlights of our Compassion Sunday? Maybe some stories, some, some wins, some praises we can share here on the Pathway podcast. Well, well first, can I just say the funny part was uh, first service, right, at our 9 a.m., the spirit was moving and all kinds of people came forward, right? Second service, during the time where you're supposed to walk up, not one person came up. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what is going on right now? Like, the spirit is just not here today, I guess. Uh, but there was a little miscommunication. And then once Pastor Randy shared, oh, it's time to come on up. Um, the second time, wow, the floodgates were open. And I could not believe how many people were coming up. Second service, just as much as first service. So that was super encouraging. But when you ask James, what was the highlight? For me, the highlight was simple. It was Owen's story. Mm -hmm. uh, just seeing that, yes, God saved him out of poverty, and he kept talking about how he was going to end the cycle, but he wasn't talking about a physical poverty. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the spiritual poverty and that the, the Jesus Christ gives him this hope that ends poverty because now there's hope in Christ. And getting to know Owen a little bit uh, in the green room and just talking to him. And I said, why? Why compassion? Because that was the question I asked. I go, why? Why? I go, Owen, sell me on compassion. Why should I 
believe in compassion? And he said one word, Jesus. I said, oh, that's, okay, that's a good answer. But he goes, that's what they're all about. Mm. All this other stuff, it all just leads to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. The kids that they impact will get Jesus. That is guaranteed. It's all about Jesus. And I think we're all about Jesus here, James. Hey, man, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. For context, if you weren't here this past Sunday, Owen is, was a representative of Compassion that benefited from Compassion and now speaks um, locally and globally, I assume, about Compassion and why we should get involved. But what about you, yeah. Pastor Brian? Yeah, same. Uh, Owen Gathanka's story, uh, the guest speaker, mm. was absolutely amazing. Just the Cliff Notes mm. uh, was a Compassion-sponsored child uh, in Kenya uh, his sponsor chose him mm. because his name was Owen. Mm. And so later in life, uh, you know, not only does, has he found Jesus and his family's been delivered from spiritual poverty, but uh, he ends up completing a bachelor's degree, a master's degree in accounting, ends up mm. employed in Colorado Springs by compassion, sees under the hood, sees that they do what they say they do with the money and falls more in love with the ministry. Now he has four children. Mm. They sponsor children, and one of the children he sponsors is Owen and uh, Nicaragua. Keeping that cycle. <laughs> so it's just like full circle, and just, you, you know, you can't make this stuff up. And uh, <clears throat> the really neat thing, I think, too, was to understand that his best man in his wedding mm. was his sponsor, Owen, mm. who was in Owen's wedding. And, and the whole thing, you just go, this. how does this happen? And that's just what the gospel does, mm. like, does things that are absolutely mind-boggling and uh, all for God's glory. So yeah. for me, that was huge. Yeah, so is the challenge now that we all got to sponsor a kid that bears our same name? <laughs> I, don't think I've, I don't think I've met another Zora before. before. <laughs> By the way, that was yeah. a great way to communicate that. You must be a professional communicator. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Uh, so funny. super cool. Um, if you missed it, man, what a beautiful moment of worship. And yeah, just providing an opportunity for people to... Um, give towards compassion. I know for even us in the student ministry, um, we sponsor a child and um, just giving them the opportunity, be like, hey, you don't have to do it, right? We've talked about multiple mm-hmm. times in the series, this is not under compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver. But mm-hmm. if we don't provide the opportunity mm-hmm. as people that are equipping the saints, then we're yeah. kind of missing the mark. So um, yeah. thanks for sharing, sharing that. That's yeah. funny. <clears throat> and for anybody watching, listening, I mean, you can go to Compassion's website, <clears throat> you know, wow. if you're interested in a child sponsorship, it's $43 a month. Um, I made the joke yesterday, you know, cut out three Starbucks trips and you're there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's... Uh, sorry, Starbucks, but you've got expensive, right? We all know it. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, yeah, just if God's revealing that to you, uh, go directly to Compassion. Or if you're a part of Pathway, reach out to us. We'd love to get you connected uh, if you're interested in, in sponsoring a child, uh, especially for families. Mm. I think it's an amazing thing to do with your kids as an act of really global discipleship, where you're beginning to have a heart for bigger than our, even our own community. So yeah, it's, it's exciting. Excellent, excellent. Well, Pastor Brian, Pastor Zorro, in addition to having Compassion um, International here with us this past Sunday, we also closed out our sermon series, First Things First. And uh, Pastor Brian, you spent a lot of time um, in the in the book of Acts, not Acts, Luke. I don't know where I got Acts from. Luke wrote Acts, I mean, that's why. Um, and you specifically were in uh, Luke chapter 10. And my question for you is, why Luke 10? What, what was the Lord stirring in you um, to go to that passage specifically? Yeah, I... Uh, you know, for me, I think Luke 10, the draw initially as I was preparing for Compassion Sunday and finishing the series was around the idea of uh, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself, and which is a, our core mission as a church, which is really the core mission as disciples of Jesus. But as I studied and looked at it, I realized like God is always ahead of me, right? His word is so rich that, in fact, the, the entirety of Luke 10 is really this teaching and stories illustrating that when he's first, everything does flow uh, to loving our neighbor and and to having compassion. So I'd love to say that I I understood it all uh, and was strategic, but it was honestly the Spirit of God uh, just leading the way. Yeah. So quick summary, uh, you know, in, in the beginning of Luke 10, he sends out the 72, he sends them out with authority. They come back so excited, and they're fired up because the demons are even submitting. And And Jesus takes that moment, and he does this throughout Luke 10, a number of teachable moments where he says, hey, you know what? You thought it was about that, and, and, and that's great. I'm going to use you like that. But your real joy should come from your name being written in heaven. Mm-hmm. 
And so it's that gospel reminder that ultimately all of us, our core is, is he first? And are we, is our name in heaven? And then are we excited about other names being written in heaven? And then as the passage goes on, a, a lawyer uh, steps in and asks, uh, you know, and try, he tries to bait Jesus into a debate, and, and, and Jesus brilliantly is responding with, you know, uh, questions in return, and then a story about the Good Samaritan. And it's interesting, I didn't get to this in the message yesterday, but uh, in, in literature, in, and especially in Bible literature, there's often authors will use what's called a chiastic structure, where you have uh, this... I, I deliver the teaching, I reinforce it with a, a story, and then I do the reverse of that. So A, B, then B and A. And, and as that plays out, the parable of the Good Samaritan is then followed up very quickly by the story of Mary and Martha. And so at the very end of Luke 10, it's this reminder that Jesus is saying, hey, even as you love and have compassion for your neighbor, do not forget it begins by sitting at my feet and putting me mm. first. And for me, like, obviously, this just gets me fired up because it fit our series so well. And again, I stumbled into it, just listening to, <laughs> to God and not realizing how rich this text was. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when we, we let God uh, direct us into the scriptures. And yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Any thoughts from you, Pastor Zorro, concerning um, Luke 10 specifically? And if not, I want to switch gears a little bit. No, yeah, I just, I mean, it's really hard when you talk about the Good Samaritan story to not just go, wow, what a conviction, especially uh, in all three of our roles, right? We, we're, we're the professionals, right? We're the professionals, mm -hmm. but that doesn't give us an out to not serve the least of these, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a great reminder of, wow, to check my own heart. It, when God puts somebody in my pathway, do I go around mm -hmm. or do I go head on and say, Lord, what, what would you like me to do today? Yeah, yeah, amen. It's a good challenge. With that being said, in the story of the Good Samaritan, which you, you highlighted, Pastor Brian, one of the most popular stories in, in mm -hmm. the Bible and probably even um, in literature in general, and you talked about how the Samaritan, and if you don't know your your historical context, that's a big deal, the fact that he's a Samaritan, as you mentioned in the sermon, because Jews and Samaritans didn't get along, and the fact that he's the one who mm -hmm. helped the, the, the poor guy, right? And in specifically, um, chapter 10, verse 33, it talks about how the Samaritan had compassion for the, <laughs> the wounded guy. And uh, you, you broke us apart. You did a little word study um, in your sermon. Give us a little Greek um, for the word compassion. And I think it's important for us to highlight. Can you give us um, a SparkNotes version of that word study about the word compassion? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's the Greek word uh, splanknismai, which just uh, sounds cool if you say it. But, <laughs> but if you say it, I put it up on the screen for a reason because I wanted people to see it because it, it it looks like kazoot height or like it's coming from like like oh I just like splanknismied, and 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 the word actually does indicate that that there it's almost like this if you think of like an internal visceral response where something in you has been so stirred. Mm that it's coming from, uh, even if you do the word study, it, it talks about like from within the bowels, mm -hmm. like it's, it's deep. And, and I think seeing that in this case is helpful because mm -hmm. when Jesus reinforces at the end of the story, okay, who showed mercy? He did, he's not asking the question who showed compassion. He's asking who showed mercy. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I didn't get this out in the way that maybe we are right now yesterday, but I think there's something the Spirit of God, and we need to be open to, where the Spirit may may split knees by us, right? Mm -hmm. It may cause us to, to realize, okay, God wants me to see this. God wants me to respond. And then the question in, in those cases where it's somebody who's in need won't be, did you have compassion? It might be, did you have mercy? It's a big deal for me because... I know in my own life, mm. if I take mm. a spiritual gift inventory, uh, you know, right or wrong, we all have our, our first gifts and we have our last. And in my life, mm. consistently at the bottom of the list is mercy. So every time I read this passage, every time it ministers to my heart, because I, I'm reminded that I may not naturally have mercy, but by the Spirit of God, I'm, I'm required to have mercy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's always, for me, very convicting and challenging and then encouraging that if I'm interruptible by the Spirit and mm -hmm. I allow the Spirit to do it, 
uh, he'll help me to live in a way that's not natural to me. It's good. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It's just so many things are swirling through my mind right now. It's just the spirit, just the conviction, because I think the compassion, that word, um, if it's with one of you guys, I can show it. I can show the mercy. Mm. If it's with one of my kids, I can do it. But it's the stranger. It's the person that we're called to love that it, it's hard because I look, I look at times where as a dad with four kids, I look at when my kids mess up or when they do something dumb or they're hurt or whatnot. Mm. There's a special place in my heart that just breaks. And then I, I would do anything for them to be right again. Like no matter what it takes, even if it was their fault, it doesn't matter. But if they show any type of remorse, I'll do anything to make it right for them. But that's not the way I treat others mm -hmm. all the time. I'm like, what? But it's it's scripture is very clear though that if I want to have a gospel first life, right? So the world will know by my love for one another. How do I demonstrate this compassion, this mercy in every aspect of my life? Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy on Sunday mornings. It's easy in my home sometimes. But man, when it's with a waiter or a waitress or on the field of play, I start struggling. Yeah, that's real talk, 100%. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Pastor Zora. Um, with that being said, I have a couple questions. Um, I'll zero in on this word compassion some more. You talked about, Pastor Brian, at the beginning that really compassion should be the motivator behind um, mm -hmm. why we do what we do, right? We want to see people come to know Christ, be written in Lamb's Book of Life, and mm -hmm. I give out of compassion. I give my time out of compassion. I give my resources out of compassion, right? So the 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 place we want to be is a motivation of compassion. That's why I do what I do. What 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 advice could you give? Because I'm with you, Pastor Brian. Compassion, mercy, lowest um, gift on the spiritual gift for me. Um, why that is, Lord, I don't know. Yeah, we can talk about it in heaven. But uh, um, what would you say to the person? So we want to be at a space where we're doing things out of compassion. But what if you just don't have compassion? Mm -hmm. But God, God requires obedience, right? Mm -hmm. How does one get to a place where they're uh, moving past just the obligation? I'm going to do this because God tells me to do so. To no, I'm doing this out of joyful compassion and i know there's probably a lot to that but what are some advice you could give to someone like me or those listening that just struggle to have compassion in general yeah well i i think for me I'll, I'll speak out of what i believe is from kind of the word from scripture and then just my own life and experience but um you know one of the statements in the message was that the love of god enlarges life and and i really believe that uh when we understand his love and compassion for us, uh, it, it begins to create a gratitude. It begins mm. to create um, the same kind of love and mercy and compassion that, that he's poured out on me. I now can't mm. help but want to share that mm. with others. And, and I think when, and I, I, I made this statement yesterday that, you know, if you're bitter or burned out as a Christian right now, mm. and it was kind of funny to feel that in the room because I think mm. we've all ran <laughs> into bitter, burned out Christians. We've probably had our own moments where mm. we were like that, where we're serving out of duty, mm. uh, which may have a place for a dry season, but at the end of the day mm. in that dry season, the only way out is mm. to get back to what's first and to sit back in the gospel and the word of God to remember how compassionate and mm. merciful and loving he has been. Uh, I find even my own life, when I'm struggling to forgive people, it's often mm. because I forgot how much I've been forgiven mm. of. And those are, those are for me, the, the things that um, are counterintuitive, because we can think we got all the head info, and then we start running and doing mm. things with our hands and our feet, and, and we don't take care of our heart. And, and our heart is that place where when he's pouring in, it'll, it'll flow freely. Um, I'll just say practically, too, for me, while my one of my lowest gifts is mercy, uh, it's one of my wife, uh, Cindy, mm. it's one of her top gifts. I think it's actually her top gift. Uh, and so in 23 years of marriage, man, I have learned a mm. lot about being merciful and compassionate by doing life with her. And, and I think in the body of mm. Christ, that's what also helps mm. is that we're not supposed to be like you don't have all the gifts mm. and and you may struggle with something but whether it's your wife or your husband or a, a brother or sister in the body they help us to learn how to live that way yeah mm. 
Yeah, so a guy like you, James, who you're you're open to saying that you struggle with this sometimes, but I also know you well enough to know that you're obedient to Scripture, mm-hmm. and and because of that, I think God will get you there to where you need to be. Um, I think of that that song where it says, "Break my heart for what breaks yours." So if we're constantly looking at people through the lenses of Jesus, um, we don't we can't do anything else but show mercy and compassion, and especially to those who don't know Jesus yet, you know, and I was um, reminded that, about that yesterday, yesterday afternoon after church, hanging out with this guy. Um, mm. He's super busy. He owns a, his own business. And I don't know how compassionate he really is because he's very factual, right? But uh, this Wednesday night, you know, we have Burger Bash, right? A quick plug in for Burger Ooh. Bash. <laughs> All right, um, come on out. <laughs> But um, his son also has, he only has one son, him and his wife. They, it was hard from, to, you know, their journey was difficult to have their son. And he has a ceremony coming up this Wednesday night. You know what this guy's choosing to do? It's a karate ceremony or something like that. He's choosing to maybe miss that ceremony because he has a plus one that has never said, yes, I'm coming to church, but he's open to this burger bash. Hmm. So because of that, he's so compassionate about this guy's salvation that he's going to sacrifice whatever else it takes hmm. to show that compassion and mercy towards this one guy. You know, and, and that to me was like, okay, I know you're a hardcore guy, dude, that's straight up, but you're willing to show compassion and mercy to this one guy, your plus one, because you want to see him saved more than anything else. That's good. Yeah, I think as the closer we get to the heart of Christ, the more compassionate we become. And there is a sense where we also can't um, make our compassion contingent on our feelings. Like, mm. I don't feel like I'm compassionate. <laughs> There's a lot of things I don't feel like doing, but I yeah. got to do because the Lord asked me of it. But over time, I think it will develop. And I do like how you said, Pastor Brian, that this is also a beautiful picture of the body of Christ. Not everyone has the same gifts. Mm. So partnering with people that have um, more mercy and compassion and let that um, help bolster your, your own compassion. And if you're listening, Pathway Family, this is a good plug-in for our spiritual gifts class coming oh, yeah. up here in the middle of October. And this is something we shared yesterday even at, in our announcements that we cannot function the way we're supposed to function as a body of Christ unless you participate. So mm-hmm. jump in the spiritual gifts class. Amen. Another question for you guys concerning compassion. So there is a general sense of compassion that all Christians should have towards loss, right? We are to seek to save that which was lost. We are to make disciples. Jesus makes that pretty clear, right? And hopefully everyone who's listening who's a Christian has a burden for lost people, right? That's literally why we do what we do. We want to see heaven full. Um, On top of that, kind of general calling to compassion, there's some like direct and missional callings to compassion. Let me unpack what I mean by this, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. There are passions God has put inside of us, just like spiritual gifts, right? Some burdens that each one of us have that we have special heightened compassion towards, right? Here's a, a silly example. I don't even know if it's a good example, but some people are like just big animal people, right? <laughs> I don't know if that's from the Lord or, or whatnot, but for me, I am not an animal person at all, right? You can you can throw me all, all those sorry sob stories with the, the dog with the broken leg. Careful, and, James. And, uh, careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being real, right? Um, and that's not gonna that's not gonna stir me unless the Lord softens my heart, which. Can can be done, right? Um, so, for example, but someone else has a super big passion mm. for that, right? I know for me, I have a passion for the youth, right? That's why I'm in youth ministry um, over prime timers, right? Nothing is prime timers. But I, I love I, how you compared animals to middle schoolers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there is a correlation at times, <laughs> for sure. Um, but, um, but basically, we all have maybe our wheelhouse that we feel an extra anointing of compassion towards. Is that is that a true mm. statement that I just made? Is that is that uh, or is that just a James thing where there can be like a sense of you know you have the heart for this, you have a heart for this, therefore mm. stay in your lane and show um, extreme compassion towards this demographic over mm. this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. So <clears throat> this this actually leads us right back, I think, to who is my neighbor, right? Mm. And and what Jesus was trying to illustrate. Uh, in that story. So you have uh, the priest who had a lane, you have a Levite who had a lane, and then you have the Samaritan who was willing to leave his lane Mm. literally to see and to go and to give towards a man that uh, ethnically was in this Mm. moment of divide that, no, we don't associate. And, And so I think 
what you're saying is actually very true, that the Lord will call us. Uh, there's a general direction for all of us, love God, love all people in our pathway, uh, you know, make disciples. And, and so that may lead to how we do that in the group we feel called to. Uh, but none of us are let off the hook mm. on the idea that God may put someone in our path that doesn't fit that demographic. You know, it's a great reminder that God loves all people, and He will, He does, I believe, want us to be interruptible mm. and 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 to to have moments. Now, there is nothing in the story, nothing we would know since that would indicate that that meant that the Samaritan now became. You know, Jericho Road became his ministry, and he was there all the time. And, you know, he did this two, three, four, five times. Uh, you know, he may have gone back to whatever he did, and but in that moment, mm. he allowed the Spirit of God. I think it's a great reminder because um, I, I'm going to be a little more safe than you were. I'm not going to indicate things mm. that I'm compassionate about and not compassionate mm. about. But you can imagine, as a lead pastor of, uh, of a church, there are ministries that mm. in my flesh I'm more mm. passionate about then then maybe and and it's just the spirit of God that says no I, I love all of this and I want to lead you in it and and so that would be kind of where I would land I don't know what are your thoughts because we, <laughs> we we, we want to let the spirit of God um, I, I guess what I would say is let's not be like the lawyer who's ultimately trying to excuse himself from his neighbor mm-hmm. when when in fact and and this is I'd say I got a text this morning from from mm. someone. We are in a difficult cultural moment right now in our country, and we have almost allowed ourselves to be so swept up even politically that we forget Mm -hmm. that if they're on the other side of the political divide, that's still my neighbor. And how do we do and love that? Because that's outside of my lane, Mm -hmm. but I still need to have compassion Mm -hmm. for that person. So there's a lot there. Um, I'll just put a plug in. We're starting a new series, you know, coming uh, next weekend on the Book of Daniel and defining moments and how do we navigate cultural chaos. Mm. And I'm really excited because I think all of us are going to have to figure out how to do that and to uh, to recognize who who our neighbor is and how God calls us to love them even in the midst of all this conflict. Awesome. Can I add a clarifying thing point before you share, yeah. Pastor Zora? Yeah, so when it comes to that, that uh, talking about in your lane and things like that, I'm definitely, no, if the Lord, the Lord says meant to love all people, love all things um, in, ter- in the terms of uh, restoring, raising up, and building up, um, which is our mission here at Pathway, I'm just more asking, is there a sense where I'm going to devote my time, talents, and resources to this? Because I only have so much time, talent, and resources. I can't give it to every initiative, every every demographic is the way I was saying it. Um, we're all we're always supposed to love all people. Um, I'm not saying that. No, we're not supposed to. But like, yeah. you know you know what I'm saying? Is, I is do, that... and, and I apologize if it, it made you feel... Oh, like, I, just I, I just wanted it, to make it, sure. Yeah, people I, think, I, oh, I he only loves certain people. Yeah, I think <laughs> no. that clarity is yeah. great, though, because yeah. I would say yes to your question, that, mm-hmm. that there is a sense that that this is what God has uniquely wired me, mm-hmm. uh, time, talent, and treasure, love, and, and even experience. Like, truthfully, um, I, I'll just, I, I'll go there. Like, I, uh, you know, if you put me in a kindergarten classroom every day, <laughs> those kids would be bored to death, right? Because the way I teach, how I teach, is just not a fit for mm-hmm. that age group. So yeah, I do think you're absolutely right. There are things that are part of our specific direction and and where God has called us. And then if I got that call that, hey, can you come into the kindergarten classroom and serve for for today? Absolutely, I would need to be open to that. Right. Yeah. Interruptible, but it's not your your main lane no, where you spend no. your compassion. No, right? and those yeah. kids are thankful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, good, good. Thought, thoughts on this whole segment? I, I think he gave the perfect lead pastor answer, right? I think that's... That's where he's called to be, but I think there there are times where we are called into certain lane, right? That we're more passionate about than others. Like you're passionate about next gen, right? That takes a special gift because, like, especially with middle schoolers, two hundred on a Wednesday night, that it's it's an absolute zoo, bro. And like, it takes a special calling to be able to serve in that capacity. Um, but I think if we're all serving to our passions, um, then the body of Christ, all the needs get met, right? 
like for me, and I'll say this, I don't, I don't care who's listening, but my, my heart, man, my passion, the people that really break my heart are the um, second halfers. You know, the people that are living in the fourth quarter of life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where the church has kind of said, ah, oh, you know, we're all about the future of the next gen, but you, you've had your time. Those people are actually the ones that I'm most passionate about because I'm like, wait a minute, you have all this wisdom now that you can help s- share with the next gen, right? So we want to make sure you have a voice in our church, in our body, and that you have a seat at the table, right? Mm-hmm. So those are the people that I'm super passionate about, but... I'm not really passionate about middle schoolers anymore. I mean, 25 years ago when I was a middle school pastor, I was. But thank God he's called me out of that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So the Lord, the Lord uh, moves in seasons, right? Um, another thought, and this wasn't scripted or anything, but as we're just talking here, how do we, um, maybe this is for another episode, how do we, so you have, we all have different uh, levels of compassion for different things. How do we kind of like, not elevate mm. your passion over my passion mm. or you know and then we com- compare and co- and contrast mm. and things like that even for our church people like oh you know obviously the men's ministry people in the men's ministry we pumped about the men's ministry over maybe a different the women's ministry because they're not a woman right um how do how do we kind of hold that tension i guess that's a great book you should write someday right okay <laughs> gotcha <laughs> yeah yeah i i would say just again the more we can see the body the more we can see the kingdom and the big picture right i, I begin mm. to see and celebrate mm. the gifts of others i begin to uh to recognize that i have my preference i have my passion but at the end of the day the bigger picture is man god is mm-hmm. using you as you said, with those in the fourth quarter and, and you with those that are in the second quarter, maybe if, if we're looking at youth. And and so I think for me, it, it's, and, and that's so hard right now in an individualistic culture mm. that we're all mm. swimming in, in, in not just America, but mm. American Christianity, mm. where we somehow have allowed it to become about me and Jesus. <laughs> and, and I'm not like against me and Jesus, but it's me and Jesus in the body of Christ. Mm. And so if I can see that, then I quit comparing. Mm. I quit projecting. That's the other thing. I think, man, it's so easy to project mm. my passion and, mm. and, and what I want. And, and if you don't respond, then you're a bad person. Mm. Well, maybe not. Maybe you're just called to something different than me. Mm. And I think we've got to have that, that bigger, healthier perspective. And that's what I get excited about, as you can tell, hopefully, is... You know, I want our people to, to man, let's celebrate what God's doing mm. uniquely in each of us because the bigger picture is the kingdom is winning. Yeah. Amen. So last question for you guys, still centered around this word compassion, our word of the day, splachnog, or whatever you say it, right? Um, so we talked about a general sense of compassion we're to have for all people, right? The gospel. We talk about a missional sense of compassion that we have towards that line up with our spiritual giftings, passions, personality even, right? Now there's there's also a sense of compassion that God requires of us where I want to call it like a direct calling of compassion, where God puts something on your heart, like kind of out of the blue. We're talking about revelation over reason. Um, you've talked about that multiple times, Pastor Brian. And this is like a revelation, like, I have no idea why God is calling me to do this, mm. but I'm going to have compassion. It doesn't, go, it doesn't really line up with my spiritual giftings, which I don't think God does often, but there are times when God calls you to do things that are outside of your kind of your comfort zone, right? Um, how, how do you explain that, that those type of moments of the, the need for compassion just out of the blue, like even our Compassion Sunday, right? So um, I'm assuming the Lord put on the hearts of people to um, sponsor a child that normally... Like rationally, they'd be like, "I'm not sponsoring a child," mm-hmm. but for some reason, the Lord just burdened my heart with that in that in that specific moment. Can you explain that kind of scenario? Uh, I think you, it's only because, and something that we try to harbor in the culture we've tried to create here at Pathway is that you would be spirit led. So mm-hmm. you, if you're a spirit led person, when God gives you that opportunity, you're ready to respond. Mm-hmm. Like those people, it wasn't yesterday that made that decision for them to support compassion and those children um, in Uganda or Haiti. It's everything that happened this week that led up to that, all their quiet time, all, you know, with Jesus, all the times they opened up the scripture, all the times they uh, worshiped him in the car alone, all the prayers. And then God gave them the opportunity yesterday morning on, on Sunday morning to respond. And because they are already spirit led, spirit fed, spirit filled, they're able to respond. Mm-hmm. But if they weren't spirit filled, spirit led, I don't know if they would have responded or they would have been able to. Wow. 
That's a perfect pastoral answer, as you said earlier. I love it. Uh, just di- drilling down on it a little bit more, because it's true. If the Spirit is leading, that's a part of it. I think, for me, there's two things that come to mind. One is, I mentioned in the message, like once we've defined who is my neighbor, how do we love our neighbor? Uh, to just see, to go, and to give, right? And so to see... Mm-hmm like Jesus sees, uh, to then go, whatever that looks like or means, whether it's across the street or across the seas, and then to give of our time, talent, and treasure. Now, in that space, what I didn't have time for that now I've got a minute on uh, is to just say, give yourself permission uh, to try. Mm. I think too often we're paralyzed by analysis. We're paralyzed by, what well, is this God? Is it not God? Mm. And, and I think part of how we learn to respond to the Spirit is by giving ourselves the freedom to fail forward, to, mm. to say, I thought that was God. And, and you know, we, we ministered before being here in Vero Beach. We were in a, a community that was, um, uh, median income was like $17,000, and need was all around us. And so for 14 years, there were times where you're, you're trying to see and go and give. And I could tell you many, many stories of times where it was the Spirit of God and you got it right. And, and then other times mm-hmm. where you, you responded and you gave. And man, to this day, I couldn't tell you it worked out, mm-hmm. but I have no idea what God has done with that since. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think we've just got to give ourselves uh, the grace to say, it's better to try if we mm. think it's God than to not try. Mm. And so if we could just live in that space, I think God will be, you know, doing in, in our everyday life. And that was the other thing I hope that stood out for people is this isn't about what happens here at church. Mm. Um, what happens here at church matters, but it's to encourage and equip us to go out there to live this in our everyday life. Amen. With that being said, that's all the questions I have today. Any, any closing thoughts, Pastor Zorro, Pastor Brian, as we wrap up this episode? Well, I, I, think, I guess my closing thought would be if we want to be, like we say here, uh, turn on the lights in the world, right? We have to live this out. We have to um, be the Good Samaritan, right? We have to be compassionate. We have to show mercy even when we don't want to. I think that's the time where we have to do it the most because I believe that that's the conviction. That's where God is really trying to work is in that space is when we don't want to. Amen. Yeah, I think for me it's just that idea that this is this is a picture of the abundant life. Mm-hmm. Like this is the adventure. <clears throat> so when we begin to live this, um, it changes your day-to-day and in, in a, a way that enlarges your life. And man, that's our heart. Mm. We, we just want to see mm. what I believe Jesus wants for his people, which is, hey, I've got this abundant life, this amazing adventure. And when you begin to allow your routine and your everyday walk to be his, it changes your your Christianity in ways that, um, yeah, you, you will have stories to tell. Mm. And uh, man, that's what we want for our people. Amen. Well, hopefully you guys have gleaned some information, some inspiration from our talk today. I want to highlight one last thing as we close that Pastor Zoro said. Um, if you're not being filled with the Spirit, if you're not walking by the Spirit, it's going to be hard to respond to the Spirit. So I encourage you, walk mm-hmm. with the Spirit today. Be in the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Um, listen to the Word of God. Be in community. Be um, connected in a local church. With that being said, actually, here at Pathway Church, we're starting a, a new sermon series, as has already been mentioned, called Defining Moments um, through the Book of Daniel. So please join us this Sunday if you're around town here in Indian River County. Um, but until then, we look forward to seeing you again in our next Pathway podcast Um, Digging deeper, building a bigger people in Christ. Have a great rest of your day.